going to be a lot better. The, I think the only did he did good was just move around as much as he can, you know. And and when I would throw, when I would let my hands go, I would land, you know. I would land punches, and I think from being overweight, it kind of hold me back. It hold me back. I think I was just looking for one, two punches instead of the usually that I am throwing four or five punches. And I, I think that's what got the best of me. But, you know, he, he did a good job. He, he got me with a lot of different jabs. And uh, it, was, it was more you than his performance? Because this, this is the feeling I like. He, he, he did a good performance. You know, he did what he had to do. He boxed me around. He ran around. And, you know, he, he just boxed me. And for me, being overweight, I couldn't do, I couldn't perform the best that, that I could. So Andy, in terms of looking forward, if the potential third fight doesn't happen straight away, which other heavyweights in the division would you like to challenge? You know, the, in the heavyweight division, there's a lot of fighters right now, you know, and I just want to, I just want to rest. I want to talk to my team. I want to think about my career and, you know, just look back what I need to do, you know, and just focus more and, you know, uh, just train harder, train harder for this fight and, you know, don't look, don't look past my opponents, and you know. But I'll fight anybody, anybody in the game. I'll fight anybody. I'm not scared of nobody. You know, me and Anthony did did a really good job, and like I said, I'm um, I'm a dangerous fighter to any fighter. You know, so I have a heart of a lion, and I'm gonna do my best, either if I'm in my best or not in my best. So, but I wasn't in my best um, today. You know what? I, I took his shots really good. You know, um, I didn't feel really hurt besides the one that that he cut me. It was kind of bothering me a little bit. But you know, we all hit hard in the heavyweight division, and it only takes one punch to change the fight. But I think I took his punches really well, and you know, he didn't knock me down at all like like I did on the first fight. But like I said, the next fight is going to be a lot different. Yes. Well, we, we did expect for him to stick and move. Uh, he, did a, he did a good job at it, you know, in boxing. But uh, honestly, we also, also thought that he was going to stand and try to stand and, 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 and fight Andy. And when he did, the little that he did when he did, uh, we feel that Andy got the best of him. But then he went back to, you know, back to his game plan, he listened to his coaches. So, I, you know, I got to commend Andy and his coaching for, for, you know, coming up with a good game plan. Any more questions? It is, you know, I think I'm going to learn from my mistakes. And like I said, I'm, I'm happy that I learned right now. Then, and then later, I'm still young. And, you know, there, there's still a lot bright future for me. And, you know, I, I just got to learn from my mistakes, just like how he did from the first fight. And there's no excuses. He, he was a better man. And I just needed to stay. Sh I should have just taken it more serious. And I think it would have been a different, a different fight. And one more question, Andy. In terms of your short period as a champion, do you feel like you were given the respect that's deserving as a world champion? No. Um, I think people are still doubting me, you know. But... Um, I'm still a dangerous. I'm still a dangerous fighter to any fighter in the heavyweight division. I could take the punches. I could give the punches, and especially being in my hundred percent, um, I could dominate anybody in the world. So, I think that's what we're gonna work on. I think we're gonna work harder in the gym, and you know, we're gonna prepare ourselves even better, and you know, um, dedicate myself a, a lot more.
Excuse me, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Um, it was the same, you know, I fought over there in LA before in the open arena. It was a little cold, I know it was raining, but you know, there's no excuses for that. We're gladiators, we're warriors. We have to fight in any circumstances, so. But like I said, he was a better man, and I would love to do it again, but in a better, better shape, and just the way that I was on June 1st. Andy. Yeah. Uh, can, you, can you tell us, like, if you knew that you hadn't trained how you wanted, how, how were you feeling when you were walking to the ring, given that you had that in your mind? You know, I felt like I, I was going to do my best. You know, I was going to do my best. We can't doubt ourselves. You know, once we're in the ring, we have to motivate, um, motivate myself and, you know, just pray to God that everything's going to be okay, not just for me, but for him too, for us to walk out healthy to our family. And, you know, he was the better man. He won. But like I said, he, I won one. He won one. I want to do it again. Question for Manny. Um, you know, Andy just apologized to you a few minutes ago. Um, how do you feel about what he said? And at what point in camp did you realize something was wrong? You know, as a, as a coach, you got to be with your fighter 100%. Even when things aren't going well, you know, there's a lot of, obviously, I'm, I'm not the first coach, and, 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 and he's not the first fighter where, you know, situations happen in camp. And uh, I'm there. I'm there for him 100%, you know, through good and bad, through thick and thin, even when things aren't going so well. Uh, I have to apologize to him, too, because, you know, this is, this is a team effort. And, you know, um, when you don't win, it's, it's, it hurts. It always hurts. But, uh, uh, you know, situation is you got to stick with your fighter. Even when things, again, once again, even when things aren't going well, there's a lot of things that people, media people don't know, but you gotta, you know, you gotta stick with your, you gotta stick with your guy. You gotta stick with your fighter no matter what, even now. You know, I'm right here sitting next to him and letting him know that, that, you know, I got his back. You know, a lot of people are gonna shy away or run away or whatever, but I'm not that type of individual. I'm with my fighters 100%. And now, Andy, you know, as the seconds were ticking by at the, end of the, at the end of the fight, you were motioning for Joshua to come and fight you. Were you frustrated, and what did you think about him? Because even when you were in the exchanges, he was jumping out of them rather than trying to punch his way out. I was a little frustrated, you know, because we didn't do what we've been working on. And like I said, I think for me being overweight, I couldn't, I wasn't fluid enough. I wasn't moving the way that I wanted to move, you know. I think being overweight got the best of me. I thought it was going to be a better thing for me. I thought I was going to be stronger, but I think being lighter, I'm going to let my hands go and I'm going to be a completely different fighter. But, you know, I think he did a good job. Yeah, now, you know, we, we've all had moments in our lives where we procrastinate and say, all right, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. Was there points in camp where you were just like, all right, tomorrow I'm going to get it together and do this? And Of course, there is always tomorrow, tomorrow. And, and Manny knows and my dad knows too. And like I said, I should have listened to them. And I'm pretty sure we would have got the victory. But, you know, we learn from our mistakes. You know, Manny could tell the truth. My dad could tell the truth. But I don't want them to be no excuses, you know. He won. But I know it's going to be a lot better next fight. Andy Ruiz, uh, Nazir from ESPN Los Angeles. You've, done, you've been such a phenomenal role model for your country, Mexico. I have a lot of Mexican friends. I'm from Los Angeles myself. They all talk so highly about you. What does this mean to you, what you've done for boxing, especially for the Mexican community in your country? You know, right now I'm a little disappointed in myself because I know I could have done a lot better. But, you know, I'm, I'm still happy and I still thank God for me, for him putting me in this position. You know, this is a, a dream come true. I made my dreams come true on June 1st. And, you know, um, it was another dream being the a main event here in Saudi Arabia, uh, a big card, you know. So. I don't take nothing for granted. I learned from my mistakes. I'm proud of being here, you know. Um, I'm the first Mexican heavyweight champion of the world that there's ever been, you know. I'm in the histories, but um, I just thought I should have took this fight more serious. And, you know, and everybody that's out there that has a dream, you know, they could accomplish anything that they want. Look at me, I, I came a long way, you know, a lot of roller coasters, a lot of ups and downs, and this is one of my ups and downs that I could tell my story, and best believe I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna bounce back 
and being the heavyweight champion of the world once again. Thank you, everybody.